having the water change done the night before seems to help a lot more because then the fish are already in spawning mode because they are like kind of frisky when you do water change and then the barometric pressure drops and everybody just goes poof spawns eggs everywhere so that seems to work quite a bit for me what's going on everybody welcome back to malik's water garden in today's video we're going to look at placo breeding and more specifically placo breeding triggers which means the things that we can do to help these animals to initiate spawning now they are one of the easiest animals to keep and breed and they breed quite readily in aquariums so the breeding triggers are actually just secondary but since it is happening in my fish room right now and i am getting these guys spawning and uh, things are going in the direction I figured I'm gonna make this video because it might help some of you guys who are actually attempting to get your fish to spawn as well now before I get into the video I'm gonna make some disclaimers you cannot force these animals to spawn so you need to actually have a breeding group or a pair potentially whatever this the scenario might be for this particular species you also need to have them at the right age so sexual maturity is a must both animals or the entire group has to be at their sexual maturity level and uh, they are also have to be at peak health so optimal life health conditions are also essential so that the animal has all the reservoirs it requires to produce eggs and sperm and to be able to reproduce so now let's say granted all these things have been met and you are providing with this, the right spawning material or sites like for cave spawning species which are majority of the species we keep the caves that they require or the tube spawning species like the Ryan loricaria the tubes that they might require or the sand spawners the sand that they might require as well as all the other nutritional environmental and uh, temperature factors and everything else that the animal requires has been met now which means you have done all your preliminary work and uh, done all the research so if you haven't watched my other videos i highly recommend you check those out and check out my entire playco playlist which explains how to keep and maintain optimal conditions for many of these different species a new video about rhine loricaria lanceolata and rhine loricaria red lizard catfish care and maintenance is coming up right after this i've actually recorded the video and i'm in the process of editing this video right now so that will be coming up so if you haven't subscribed subscribe down below so you get updated when that video as well as many other videos like that get uploaded now granted you have done all the preliminary work that the animals require to be in peak condition and they are actually in peak condition one of the things that you have to pay attention to is that these animals seem to be seasonal spawners. Now, from all the research that I have done and read, all the papers that I have read, as well as my own personal experience and observations over the last few years, has led me to believe that is that to be completely accurate. Spawning triggers. Really and truly, there is not really any real spawning triggers per se. There are natural occurrences that seem to be helpful in uh, getting them to spawn it's just like with us you know you want to take a girl out you take her to a fancy restaurant you know you want to win her heart you know candlelight dinners you know events out things like that make her feel feel special sweep her off her feet right same kind of thing applies i guess for playcos except their triggers are a little bit more environmental so for me personally, I've noticed this quite a bit and I've read this quite a bit in uh, literature as well, is that they seem to have a distinct spawning season. That seems to also correlate for the wet season or the rainy season in the Amazon, which makes a lot of logical sense when you really look at it. Because during the rainy season, the Amazon rainforest opens up to the rest of the rainforest and you, there's a lot more opportunities for animals to, to feed and forage in the flooded forest as opposed to being confined to the rivers throughout the rest of the year. So they, there is a lot more chances for, for baby fish, for example, to go out and find food and survive in the forest in the leaf litter and stuff like that. So there's definitely more chance that surviving the fry if they were to spawn during the, the, the rainy season. So it all makes sense. Now the rainy season seems to happen 
from about January to February till about July being uh, and the most intense part of the rainy season being May and June, which also seems to be the coldest part of the year for the entire Amazon region. Uh, region. So uh, this all seems to correlate to a lot of spawning activity. Now in my fish room for example there's a lot of intense spawning going on in a few tanks in the last few months. You guys remember we've been documenting some of this stuff and uh, there's now eggs in the tank behind you guys the L471 tank so I'm kind of excited for that. I'm not gonna count my chickens until they hatch but there's definitely a chance that this clutch will hatch and I'm letting the dad keep him and, and letting him hatch them. So this happened a few days ago, so which is what prompted me to make this video. And there's also eggs on the L199 tank. Uh, the male did kick out three of the fry. They are wigglers. Uh, they're really small wigglers. I did document some of it, but I did put them back into the cave. So we are gonna be looking at that in a coming video and see how we can minimize them from kicking out the clutches as well as how we can reduce them from eating eggs and all that type of stuff. So if you haven't subscribed, subscribe down below and hit that notification icon so you get updated when that video as well as many other videos get uploaded. I'm also making a red lizard catfish care and maintenance video. You do not want to miss that. So stay tuned for that. And if you haven't subscribed, you're missing out. So hit that subscription. So uh, without further ado, let's get into this and uh, talk about how I got these spawns all at the same time, more or less. Also, these guys are spawning. There's a spawn in this cave, and there's also a spawn, I believe, in this cave. And uh, I was getting a trapping in the L015 tank. First trapping ever, ever, in my, in my entire life. I've never had them trapped before. It's the first time they've ever trapped for me. And uh, he did release her shortly after. I might have spooked him. I'm stupid in, in that regard because I got really excited and uh, I wanted to make sure that it was actually trapping, but I did get it on film, which is I think how I spooked him. But it all happened on the same day, which was on uh, Thursday, today is Saturday, and that was two days ago. And uh, we had a few days of uh, storms, intense storms and uh, thunderstorms and whatnot. And uh, the temperature did drop a little bit after it being quite warm, but it doesn't affect the temperature in here because this room is uh, basically controlled in terms of temperature and humidity and all that stuff. I have the door closed and even from the rest of the house and I have assessed the air conditioning on right now to keep it at 82 degrees Fahrenheit and it stays at 82 degrees Fahrenheit all day and if it goes below 82 degrees Fahrenheit the heater kicks in and brings it up to 82 degrees Fahrenheit. If it goes above 82 degrees Fahrenheit the air conditioner stays on and keep, brings it down to 82 degrees Fahrenheit. It's a smart thermostat. It's quite easy to control and this is essentially what it is. So the temperature outside does not affect the temperature in here, especially in the summertime. But what it does affect is the barometric pressure. So that's something we don't really seem to notice, me and you, but the fish seem to have some type, some type of internal mechanism that can detect the external barometric pressure. So as soon as the pressure drops is when they seem to spawn. I've had quite a bit of spawns over the years when there's storms, winter storms, or thunderstorms. Anytime there's a large storm happening, spawns also happen. So what I seem, to, what I like to do is I, I look the, at the weather channel, whatever predictive app, and uh, I look ahead two weeks and I see where the storms are coming, especially in May, June, and July. Uh, during these months when the intense spawning is really going on, this is especially with new groups and stuff, animals that haven't spawned yet. I really see, I've seen, uh, I really have a lot of success in May, June, and July when uh, I do these little tips, uh, tricks. So what I do is during these months, especially May, June, July, April also, but mostly May, June, and July. So full on spring to summer. Anytime there's a storm coming in the next couple of days, I get my water ready and I wait. And uh, so let's say the storm is happening today or tomorrow morning. I do my water changes tonight, the night before. I do large volume water changes. You can do it during the storm as well, but I find that having the water change done the night before seems to help a lot more because then the fish are already in spawning mode because they are like kind of frisky when you do water change. And then the barometric pressure drops and everybody just goes poof, spawns, eggs everywhere. So that seems to work quite a bit for me. And uh, I find that Doing the water changes during the storm also helps, but 
then you're kind of like they they might be in the middle of spawning you might have spooked them so there's it's always better to do the water change the day before the storm now again ha if you do all the other things that you're supposed to like if you went through all my play call playlist and you watched all the videos and you do bring your nitrates down i believe the nitrates being low seems to be a really big trigger or a factor so however you bring your nitrates down is up to you you can use aquarium resin if you want to learn about how to use aquarium resin comment below and let me know i don't use aquarium resin but i can teach you guys there is a really good option for people that have busy schedules is resin is amazing and you can bring your nitrates down without using too much uh you can use a resin filter in your filter a resin sheet in your filter and it'll bring your nitrates down throughout the entire time you have it in there so like it has a specific life period and uh, it lasts for that amount of time so we can look into that if you want me to look into that and uh, elaborate into that just comment below and let me know you can also do water changes which is what i do i just usually do large volume water changes weekly and i keep my stocking density low and i also don't feed too much trash food i feed high quality food and i feed small amounts and i feed them a lot of nutrition in small packages so when they when they eat they're not producing a lot of waste and i also monitor how much waste is produced in tanks and i stay on top of my water changes religiously now these things all help out keeping my nitrates low so that seems to be a huge trigger and if you have low nitrates you don't actually have to do the water change the day before as long as you have low nitrates the trigger is the barometric pressure dropping they spawn if the fish are ready to spawn they will spawn so now the fish have to be breeding age and sexually mature for this to work so for seabird plecos for example they need to be about three years old a lot of these other fish need to be at least two and a half to three years a lot of them two to three years old to start spawning so like for example the l340s two years at least i would say two to three years these guys have started spawning but i don't know how old they are but in captivity i know that captive fish that are born this year will not spawn next year but will spawn the year after so same thing applies to a lot of other hype ancestors but the king tiger plecos for example the l333s seem to take about two to three years as well some of them spawn two years from the time they were born some of them take about three years it's so it's how long these animals seem to take to reach sexual maturity so you cannot ex ex uh, ex expect an animal to start spawning before it reaches that age so that's a given factor the next thing is you cannot expect an animal to be spawning if it's not on the right diet so that's also a given factor and you cannot expect an animal to spawn if it is not in the right environment like for example the caves the, the temperature might be too warm or too cold there might be too much aggression from other animals that they cannot establish uh, a, a dominant corner for themselves for example these guys this male i have a dominant pair in here that seems to the male seem to be struggling quite a bit setting up a cave for himself might might just be because there's not enough small caves for him but also because there's a lot of other subdominant fish or juvenile males that are now coming into sexual mm -hmm. maturity that are constantly challenging him for dominance so he doesn't have a lot of time dedicated to spawning because he's always spending his time fighting off other males and stuff so that's a factor as well so these things have to all be considered so now um after remedying all of these things if you have met all of its other needs then it will spawn naturally and usually like in my experience those seem to happen during storms or during uh, low pressure systems but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's the only time the animal will spawn if the conditions are right they can continue to spawn all year round for example even though they are seasonal spawners and they do have a dis distinct spawning season a lot of fish will continue to spawn throughout the whole year if you provide them with the right environment now Having said that, they do definitely like wild caught fish, for example, will only spawn during the spawning season and they will take breaks. And that's normal because it's just what the animal is naturally supposed to be doing. And it does that instinctively. But captive bred fish, for example, do not seem to have a lot of those uh, instincts anymore. And they will spawn for you throughout the year. But at the same time, they still have that 
bar barometric pressure instinct where they definitely seem to uh, know when the pressure is dropping outside for some reason. So like clean, good quality water, water changes the day before if the water quality is not up to par. So you can bring your nitrate levels as close to zero as possible and then the rainstorms and stuff like that. Obviously the high quality food, the environment, the caves, the heat, the temperature, all that good stuff has to be perfect. But having said that all those things are perfect, then this is what the next step is. So I hope this helps somewhere to get spawns from their Clecos because I find that a lot of us are always uh, struggling quite a bit with our fish. And I think that the problem is not the fish or anything like that. The problem is the fish keeper and our own impatience and uh, lack of understanding about these animals. For example, if I'm expecting my Clecos to sp start spawning after the spawning season's over, I'm delusional. So right now, if I can't get anybody that's here right now to spawn within the next two to three months realistically, for example, my L015s that haven't started spawning yet, they did actually, there was a trapping yesterday or the day before during the, the, the rainstorm, which is why I'm making this video because I did all of these things. Uh, I'm at home, so I get a lot more time to play around with. So I did a huge volume water changes in many of these tanks. Some of these are actually in the middle of it. This have to, still has to get water changes, but they don't care. The nitrates in here is quite low, so they spawn quite readily for me. But the tanks that are behind you, I have spawns from the L471 tank. Uh, the L199 male is on eggs. He actually kicked out some of the fry yesterday, and I was going to pull them out, but then I ended up putting them back with a spoon into the cave. So I think he took them back in. So I'm kind of hoping that he's learning how to raise the fry himself. And uh, so we're going to look into that more detail in an upcoming video and we're going to look into why these animals might kick out eggs and also why males might eat eggs uh, at the point where they're not supposed to be doing stuff like that in nature. So we're going to look into that in an upcoming video and if you haven't subscribed, subscribe down below so you get updated when that video as well as many other videos like that get uploaded. Now for the purpose of today's video, these animals did spawn. And uh, my L015s did a trapping yesterday, the day before yesterday, today is Saturday now. So Thursday they did a trapping, I tried to get it on film and there was a little bit of trapping action yesterday as well. So if let's say granted they do start spawning now, great. If they don't spa spawn this next few months, there's nothing I can do to get them to spawn in October or November. I don't, I'm not hoping for that. I'm still going to continue to do my water changes and all that good stuff. but. I'm now looking at next spawning season in 2021 at that point. For example, if these guys don't start going, which I don't think they will. I mean, I have my dominant pair, which I'm going to move to the tank, decided to get them going, hopefully in the next couple of days. But the rest of the fish, they're not at breeding age yet. I don't think they will be at breeding age until next year. They are, some of them are breeding size or are coming into breeding age, but they're not fully there yet so I'm not in a rush so let's say they didn't start spawning in the next couple of months I'm not gonna get uh, too, I'm not gonna be too hopeful to get any spawns in the middle of winter when it's not spawning season for a lot of these animals but let's say they did spawn which is great now I'm gonna do all the things that I was supposed to do and do all my water changes and all that stuff for example my Ryan Loricaria started spawning in January I got a lot of spawns December January it's getting bigger spawns out of them so that's their thing. And then uh, also I got spawns from my L199s in, in January. So, you know, everybody has their own time and then they stop for a few months, you know, so you can't force them. And uh, so that's basically what I'm going to leave you guys with. And uh, as far as spawning triggers, rain seems to be a huge spawning trigger or low pressure systems. So rain storms or snowstorms, even... Um, thunderstorms, anything like that. Now, doing water changes at that point in time is definitely a big plus. Do it with aged water. Don't do large volume water changes with tap water directly out of your tap and try to put some prime in there because a lot of Placos have very sensitive skin and uh, even though they have armor plating, their skin is not that tough. They can die from uh, extreme changes in, in uh, environment and stuff like that. So like, high levels of uh, chlorine or chloramine or stuff like that, or shock, anything like that, can kill them. So do not put tap water directly into your tanks. I would age my tap water if I, when I'm doing large volume water. I always age my tap water, but especially for large volume water changes, I age it for about a week. 
and then I do large volume water changes. So there's always water sitting around in my room in buckets so I can do constant water changes at, for this type of purposes. So that's what I'm gonna leave you guys with. And uh, comment below and let me know what you guys' uh, thoughts are and uh, if there's anything else you think I missed and if there's anything else you, you do to get your play close to spawn in, in terms of spawning triggers or if there's any other observations you have. We always want to learn together and grow. So like, I love to, to get your inputs on things. So I love hearing back from you guys. So comment below and let me know. As always, thank you so much for your support. I love you all. I'll see you on the next video. God bless you.